We are part of the SPNN Youth Intern Program, and for the last month and a half, we have been covering the national issue of education inequity and what it looks like in our local school systems. We personally chose this topic because as students of color, our learning and growth in the classroom are directly affected by inequities in the distribution of resources for education and discipline. In raising our voices and experiences, as well as those of our peers, we hope to educate the general public and teach parents, teachers, administrators how to advocate for students inside and outside the classroom and the local policy makers and organizers of the Minnesota Education Equity Partnership. My name is Carlos Mariani Rosa. I am the Executive Director of the Minnesota Education Equity Partnership. My name is Marika Pfefferkorn and I am the Director of the Minnesota Black Male Achievement Network and Solutions Not Suspension Statewide Campaign. And I'm also a state legislator uh, from St. Paul and in past years, uh, recent years, I've, I've chaired the uh, House Education Committee. The Minnesota Education Equity Partnership is an organization that advances race equity in education in Minnesota. We exist to promote and advance students of color and American Indian students in Minnesota's K-12 and post-secondary schools, colleges, and universities. One of the first ways we have done this is through our Solutions Not Suspensions campaign, which addresses discipline disparities and the disproportionate suspension of African American males in Minnesota. As an African-American male, my brother was often pushed out of the classroom, told that his opinion didn't matter. He was suspended multiple times and not always sure about why he was suspended and often felt that it was because he was an African-American male. What we call that in education is that he's a contaminated student, so everyone has this expectation of his behavior and he is still suffering the consequence of being pushed out through that suspension. Beginning of the school year across the country, for the first time in the history of our nation, students of color and American Indian students and immigrant students were the majority of students enrolled in public schools across the country. When it comes to race equity, a lot of our teachers in Minnesota have not grown up in these communities. If you have a lot of, say, African American students in your in your state, and most do, but you know a small, tiny percentage of your teachers are African Americans, uh, that ought to raise questions. We do have an underrepresentation of teachers of color, and so many of our teachers of color feel very isolated. So when they do advocate or stand up for young students of color, they are often pushed into a corner saying, well, you're just defending those students. One of the things that we know about um, suspension is that once a student is pushed out of the classroom, it is a, a disconnect. There's a more appropriate manner than sending somebody out of the classroom, which is a loss of instruction time, and we're really trying to prevent that. At the end of the day, suspensions don't work for changing behaviors, the research tells us. Uh, suspending students at the end of the day does not do anything to improve classroom and school environments. At the end of the day, suspensions perpetuate and increase school dropout. And so all of these factors, I don't think there could be much more of a compelling argument that says, says we need to have an alternative. No, I have not heard of this school to prison pipeline. No, ma'am. <laughs> no. So school to prison pipeline, no. No. No, I have not. The school to prison pipeline is when a young person, maybe in their first referral or suspension, um, is disengaged from the school system. So one place where the school to prison pipeline is is when people, our young people are pushed out of the schools and into the streets, they're picked up then and taken down to the jails and or the detention centers, and that's where a record begins. And once you have that tag on your name or on your file, it will follow you. Suggestive punishment, I I think I know of the word, but I mean, not what evolves around it. Okay. 
Not really. Subjective punishment. No, I never, I never heard of that. Never. That's interesting, but never heard of that. Objective punishment. Oh, that sounds a little. <laughs> like rare. No. Sort of yes and no, sort of. The most frequently used category for an explanation of a suspension is other. What we found when we dug deeper into that other category is it often was subjective. And by subjective, I mean it was to the whim or the opinion of the teacher themselves rather than having a metric or a system in place that said this is acceptable, this is unacceptable, or in this instant it is appropriate to do this, this, and this. In negative scrutiny, I have not, I don't know, I've never heard that before. Um, never, no, I never heard of that word before. Inequitable yes, screw it. No. <laughs> no. Well, um, no. <laughs> I'm a good student. I don't, I don't hear that kind of stuff. Inequitable scrutiny, for example, when you walk into a classroom, there's some things that your eyes will naturally pick up particularly one of those things might be race. And so you might automatically, when you hear a sound, you look up, your eyes automatically are attracted to African-American students. They stick out in a classroom when you have um, predominantly white population. Um, and therefore, it might be that you are capturing an African-American student that is in the midst of doing something, but at the same time, the same thing is happening over here, but you don't notice it because your attention is drawn in another direction. What do you think of suspensions? A slap on the wrist? Getting sent home? Possibly a criminal record? Did you know that suspension rates correspond to school-related arrests? They're almost exact. This means that taking students out of the learning environment and giving them a mark on their school record leads to a school-related arrest and the seizure of the student by the criminal justice system. The significance of the similarity becomes all the more clear when we look at enrollment rates. African-American students make up only 16% of the student population but they face discipline in 31% of school-related arrests and 32% suspension, which means African-American students get discipline at a rate of three times more than white students. With all that said, what does equality look like in our school system? My name is Lorraine Rhodes, and I am the assistant principal at Ann Watton Middle School. My name is Carissa Peterson. I am a fourth grade teacher at Eagle Heights Spanish Immersion School. As a teacher for the past, you know, 15, 20 years, I never sent any students to the principal's office. I always dealt with whatever was going on in that classroom, I always dealt with it in the classroom. I've only had one student who was suspended and it was for physical violence. Suspensions for violent acts bullying, arson, drugs. If there's a teacher who is a peer of mine who is having really strong conflicts with a student, I always just try to advocate for the student, putting the question out there of, oh, well, have you asked the student how they're feeling, or what do you think the student feels about this, or why do you think they're doing this, just so that Teachers will remember that students are not just there to cause problems and they're not just inconveniences. I'm, I'm at a point now where because I've built relationships with students, I can sit and talk with them and I have relationships with teachers where we can sit down with the student and try to come up with some solutions that would allow them to keep the educational practices. Me personally as a teacher, I work hard to make sure that my students know that I respect them too and that they personally matter to me and it's not a I'm on top of the pyramid and they're down here it's we're all a community we're all a family we spend the first week of school developing rules as a class so that students have ownership a student will not work for you or do what is needed unless they know that you really care about them so building relationships with the teachers here in the building is paramount 
but also building uh, relationships with community members. Like mentoring um, is very, very good for alternatives to uh, suspension. So I just think it's so important to be recognizing what stories we tell, who we're letting our children um, be exposed to, and making sure that it's representing the wide breadth of humanity, um, and that all students uh, can see themselves in someone who's a hero um, and a role model. To wrap this all up, we hope this documentary has helped you to realize that education inequity has been and continues to be an issue. The unequal treatment of students simply because of race shouldn't have been an issue to begin with. As a student who was once considered a minority, I strive to break the statistics presented to you in the doc. Just as hundreds and thousands of other students do across the nation, there are people eager to change the lifestyles of future generations. And the best way to end this problem is by building a community willing to end the issue. Relationships are key after all. So, parting words told to us by Executive Carlos, it's not just about equality. Equality is very important. Equity is how you get to equality. And how you get to equality in our society is that you have to do very specific things with very specific groups because not everyone has the same advantages in terms of opportunity.